This is part 3 of a review of exponential and logarithmic functions. If you haven't seen part 2, you can either click the link that appears in the upper right hand corner or find the link in the description. In this video, I will show you how to solve exponential and logarithmic inequalities. This is AP Precalculus Topic 2.9 through 2.15. If you appreciate this content, please give it a like. Number 25. Solving an exponential inequality works the same as solving an exponential equation. Let's get uh, both sides with the same base. We can write 4 as 2 squared. So we have 2 to the second power, and then the x is multiplied, is less than 2 to the 3x minus 1 power. So that means that 2x is going to be less than 3x minus 1. Subtracting 3x from both sides gives us negative x is less than negative 1. And uh, be careful when you divide both sides by negative 1 because that does reverse the direction of the inequality. So that gives us x is greater than positive 1. And that's it for number 25. Log inequalities can be a little tricky, so I want to show you one method that works for every problem. For this method, I like to start by getting everything on one side of the inequality and a zero on the other side. So I'm going to subtract 2 log base 7 of x from both sides. So on the left side, I will now have the log base 7 of x plus 2 minus 2 log base 7 of x is greater than or equal to 0. The reason why I did this is so I can name the left side of the equation as f of x. So f of x will now represent this expression. Using the exponent property of logarithms, we can take this 2 and move it to the exponent. So we have log base 7 of x squared. Ultimately, I'm going to make a sign chart for f of x. But to make the sign chart, we need the critical values. That's where f of x is equal to 0 and where f of x is undefined. Let's start by setting f of x equal to 0. So here we have f of x equals 0. The next step in solving will be to move this term to the other side by adding log base 7 of x squared to both sides. So now we have this. Since we have the log base 7 on both sides, the arguments, the stuff on the inside, must be equal. So x plus 2 must equal x squared. Let's get 0 on one side by subtracting x and 2 from both sides. That will give us 0 is equal to x squared minus x minus 2. Hopefully this is factorable. x squared will factor as x times x. 2 will factor as 1 times 2. Inner plus outer must equal the middle of negative 1. So that means I need an inner of positive 1x and an outer term of negative 2x. Also, positive 1 times negative 2 is negative 2, so we factored it. Setting each factor equal to 0 and solving gives us x equals negative 1 and x equals positive 2. These are the first two critical values, which will go on the sign chart later. We can find the rest of the critical values by finding where f of x is undefined. You cannot take the log of a negative number or even 0. So a log expression will begin to be undefined when the argument, the stuff on the inside, is equal to 0. So let's find the beginning of where f of x is undefined by setting x plus 2 equal to 0 and by setting x itself equal to 0. 
Subtracting two from both sides gives us x equals negative two. And we already have the x equals zero. These are the four critical values that we will use to make the sign chart. Set up your sign chart like this with your critical values in order from least to greatest across the top. We need to determine whether f of x is positive, negative, or undefined in each interval. To do that, let's evaluate f of x at a test value that represents each interval. In the first interval, let's use negative three as a test value, but you cannot take the log of a negative number. So f of x will be undefined at negative three. In the next interval, let's use negative 1.5 as a test value. Well, this is still negative, so f of x is still undefined. The same thing will happen in the next interval with a test value of negative 0.5. f of x is still going to be undefined, still negative. In the next interval, let's use the number one as a test value. So that gives us the log base seven of one plus two, which is the log base seven of three, minus the log base seven of one squared. So that's the log base seven of one. This expression is positive. Uh, you could think of it two ways. The log base seven of three is a bigger number than the log base seven of one. So you're subtracting a smaller number from a bigger number, so that's positive. Or this is a special case. The log of one is always zero. So really we just have the log base seven of three, which is positive. In the last interval, let's use a test value of three. So that's going to be the log base seven of three plus two, or the log base seven of five, minus the log base seven of three squared. That's the log base seven of nine. We have a smaller number minus a bigger number, so this will be negative. We are looking for the values of x that will cause f of x to be greater than or equal to zero. So the solutions will be in this interval where f of x is positive. But what about the endpoints? f of x is undefined at x equals zero. You will never include an undefined value. So I'm going to put an open circle at x equals zero to remind me not to include this endpoint f of x is equal to zero at x equals two. We are looking for the values of x that will cause f of x to be greater than or equal to zero. So we want to include this endpoint where f of x is equal to zero. So the solutions will be on this interval. This is the solution in interval notation. We use a parenthesis to show that the endpoint of zero is not included, and we use a bracket to show that the endpoint of two is to be included. As an inequality, your solution would be written like this. I'm going to use the same method for number 27. So let's start by getting zero on one side. We will subtract two from both sides and get log base three of two x plus one minus two is less than zero. We did this so we can name the left side of the equation f of x. So we have f of x equals all of this. Ultimately, we will make a sign chart, but let's start by finding the critical values. Where is f of x equal to zero? Well, that will be where log base three of two x plus one minus two is equal to zero. The first step is to put the two back on the right hand side of the equation by adding two to both sides. We need to get x by itself. We can make the log base three go away by dropping a base three on both sides of the equation. 
On the left side, the base 3 and the log base 3 cancel each other out, leaving behind 2x plus 1. On the right hand side, we have 3 to the second power, which of course is 9. Basic algebra now, subtracting 1 from both sides gives us 2x is equal to 8, and then dividing by 2 gives us x equals 4. So that is the first critical value that will go on the sign chart later. So we had to do this method of dropping a base 3 on both sides because unlike the previous problem where we had a log on both sides of the equation, this time we only had a log on one side of the equation. So that's when you drop the base on both sides. The other critical values will come from where f of x begins to be undefined. That's where the argument, the stuff on the inside, is equal to 0. So setting 2x plus 1 equal to 0. Next we subtract 1 from both sides, which gives us 2x equals negative 1. Then we divide by 2. So x equals negative 1 half is the other critical value that will go on the sign chart. Place your critical values in order from least to greatest across the top of the sign chart. We need to determine whether f of x is positive, negative, or undefined in each interval by evaluating f of x at a test value in each interval. In the first interval, let's use a test value of negative 1. f is undefined at negative 1 because if you plug in negative 1 right here you have 2 times negative 1 which is negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. You cannot take the log of a negative number so f of x is undefined in this interval. In the next interval let's use 0 as a test value. So let's evaluate f at 0. So we will have the log base 3 of 1, because plugging in 0 makes this term go away, so that's the log base 3 of 1, and then minus 2. This is going to be negative, because the log of 1 is 0. So this term is 0. So we really just have negative 2, which is obviously less than 0. So f of x is negative in this interval. In the next interval, let's use a test value of 5. If we plug in a 5 right here, that's 2 times 5, which is 10, plus 1 is 11. So that's the log base 3 of 11 minus 2. But is this expression positive or negative? So which is bigger, the log base 3 of 11 or 2? In my mind, I'm thinking the log base 3 of 9 is 2 because 3 squared is 9. So the log base 3 of 11 must be bigger than 2. So I have something bigger than 2 minus 2. This will definitely be positive. We are looking for the values of x that will cause f of x to be less than 0. So the solutions will be in this interval where f of x is negative. We will not include either of the endpoints in the solution set because we are looking for where f of x is less than 0, not equal to 0, and definitely not undefined. In interval notation, we use parentheses to show that neither endpoint is included. Written as an inequality, the solution looks like this. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. But also, if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.